<laughs> Don't check the tweet. Bro. Yeah, I won't. Why did you want to be a part of this, bro? Well, when, when Coach Underwood called, uh, he was very kind for the first time ever over the phone, and he told me what the mission was, and I was aware of the event. I was tickled pink that he asked me to be a part of it. He told me who else was going to be on the panel. We all know somebody was affected by cancer. It was a no-brainer. Uh, I committed right away, then checked my schedule. So uh, to, to hang around these guys on the dais tonight, uh, and, and you know they have the big number. I'm hearing between three and five hundred thousand dollars. I'll take full responsibility for that. Uh, uh, couldn't say no, and happy to be a part of it. So a reputation of champagne for you. What was uh, oh, I stay coming to Champagne. It, uh, number one, it's an hour and 45 minutes from my house. Uh, and as an official who traveled a lot, that meant a lot. Um, but I enjoyed, uh, you know, the, the, the campus scene. I, I put a hat on and, and, and take advantage of, uh, of some of the restaurants and local taverns after the game. Uh, love Champagne, love coming here. Wish there was a Marriott property closer to campus, but I guess I'll settle for staying by the mall. So, love being in Champagne. How was Brad? Appreciate you. You know, uh, big personality. Uh, I am too, so it, it you would think that that could potentially clash. Um, but I've known Brad a long time. He's very authentic, and he's one of those coaches that will let you know where he stands. Uh, but he actually listened for responses. He asked legitimate questions. I enjoy coaches that the general population would believe are tough. You know, how do you deal with this guy? How do you deal with this guy? I think Coach Underwood's one of those guys that people ask about all over the country. Uh, I happen to love those type A personalities. Uh, we had uh, some wars, some battles internally. But we're both optimal communicators in my mind. Uh, I know that's something that I work towards, uh, but I could tell surface level, uh, uh, Coach Underwood was one of those guys. I've got nothing but good things to say about him today. <laughs> yes. How would you maybe uh, handle coaches that get a little too involved in the game, maybe out of the court playing defense, maybe get early pushing Cam Spencer to run the play? <laughs> you worked it back to Coach Hurley, huh? Uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, we don't want coaches to like us as officials, but we definitely want them to respect us. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of officials that have a line. You don't know what, where that line's going to be uh, until you get a feel for what the game's bringing, uh, the, the emotional mood of the fans, of the coaches. A lot of times the fans will dictate the actions of the coaches and vice versa. And... Either order comes back to us as officials. Um, I didn't have a problem with telling a coach, hey, you're getting close. You know, if this is what you're after, you know, we're heading that way, just letting you know, because I don't want, uh, I don't want to be accused of uh, you not see it coming. Um, but to be able to tell a coach, hey, get in the box, um, hey, you're pushing it, it was no problem. It was a part of basic human communication for me. The biggest thing was when heart rates went up, us as officials, me personally, I wanted to bring my heart rate down, stay cool, calm, and collective, right? Because the, all the cameras are leaving the 10 players, and they're coming right to that engagement with the coach. There's always a camera on Coach Underwood. We know that. And when I'm talking to him or any officials talking to him, the camera's right on us. So I always wanted that perception to be one of professionalism, even though what was spoken may not be. Uh, you brought up Coach Hurley. Listen, uh, Coach Hurley uh, is going to do what he can get away with. And when officials draw a line in the sand, my guess is he's going to approach that line and he'll back off. Uh, whether it's Coach Hurley or anybody else, the last thing you want is to have to penalize that team. But when it's justified and warranted and good for the game, it's necessary. And that's true for Coach Hurley. It's true for anybody. And uh, I think some coaches know how to manipulate uh, officials. Um, and, and I mean that in a very positive way, um, but Coach Underwood earns respect for people when they understand where those lines are, and I think Coach Underwood always knew that with me, and, and it always made for a great relationship. What are your thoughts on the technological advances that have changed the way you do your job, like, like the 
Yeah, you know, in-game replay, I mean, it's here to stay. You can't put the genie back in the, in, in the bottle, and, and the stakeholders have spoken. Human error is unacceptable. And I'll compliment the NCAA for saying, okay, we want to make sure our games end right, we, we, uh, but we're not going to have nonstop trips to the monitor during the course of the game. They figured out ways to do things during the media timeouts, but treat the last two minutes of the game, including overtime, differently. So I'll give a huge credit to the NCAA for that. Um, I think replay will continue to expand. I think we just saw that with basket interference and goaltending. You know, what's next? Something else I'm sure is coming. Uh, the process to get that stuff in place is pretty methodical. Uh, but again, it's going to be expanded, I would imagine, and, and not retracted in any sense. It's not the way I would draw it up. I think out, safe, ball strike, fair foul, we live with it. Same is true in, 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 in basketball. But again, with the rise in gambling interest and ensuring that games end right, I, I'm empathetic to it, uh, too. Technology off the court in a post-game situation, very important. Uh, when, when we're dealing with rules changes, we don't want to walk out and see plays when we're talking about the cylinder and flopping and all these new rules that have come in over the last six to eight years. You don't want to walk out and officiate those plays for the first time. And I think engaging in video uh, hundreds of times before you step on the court on November 6th is very important and the best officials do it. Well, retirement is uh, a subjective word I'm, I'm learning. Um, I definitely stepped off the court for good um, in 2022, but there was a multitude of reasons that I came off the court. And one of those is to run my business, which now I'm not just involved with one sport, I'm involved with 30 sports. I own a software company that's involved in uh, officiating technology, uh, officiating resources. And um, so I now have an office job and I love it. So I did the reverse of what most people do. They sit at a desk and they go, I got to get the hell out of here. I got to do something else and get out and experience the world. I did that first. So I'm 48 years old. I, I feel like I've got many chapters uh, in my book left and this one's been pretty good.